Hello, my name is Russell Gilbert. Welcome to the web lesson. And today we're looking at various grooves and drum fills, some of which are going to be similar to um, famous songs that you will know, so that the next Saturday night you go out and start playing, playing or performing your, um, uh, with your favourite um, bands, their songs and stuff. It's going to give you a few more ideas um, so that you don't go out there with only one idea. So the first thing we're going to look at is like a 12-8 type of groove. 12 eight mean, meaning that there are 12 eighth notes to the bar as opposed to um, 8 eighth notes. If we're playing in 4-4, four, four, it would be as follows. This is 4-4. Four, four. If you count that, rewind it and count the hi-hats, there'll be eight of them as opposed to 12. And this is the same thing. So what happens is it will give us a swing type of feel. So um, perhaps in the style of uh, Manic Street Preachers Design for Life, that kind of feel, that kind of thing, we can have a swung, that's in 12-8 incidentally, and it's a swung type of groove, similar to this kind of uh, sort of tempo. Mm. So that gives us that kind of 12-8 type of feel. Now, what you can also do as you start getting better with your um, technique and uh, the grace notes and the subdivisions start to come together a bit more, to give it a little bit of flavor, we can start incorporating the hi-hat, which is a very important part of the drum kit as far as giving us flavor and feel and groove uh, within the drum kit groove because the basis of the feels coming from bass drum and snare drum the hi-hat's acting like a percussive part of the drum kit, so what we need to try and do is to um, do little flavours on the hi-hat just to make it swing. What you've got to try and remember as well is not to overdo things. It's always about the song. You don't want to get in the way of the song at all. And certainly some producers, um, if you as you start to get more experience to do sessions, may like the extra busyness of the hi-hat and some may not. So all I'm doing is showing you aspects of how to embellish your drum parts and also it's progressing your technique at the same time. So at the moment what I'm going to try and do is lift up from the snare drum my left hand onto the hi-hat to give me an added subdiv subdivision onto the hi-hat um, and hopefully make it swing a bit more. I shall demonstrate it. Here we go. Obviously, you don't need to do it quite as repetitive of that. I'm showing you the technique of it, but what you can do, it's very nice to put it in maybe at the end of an eight bar phrase or a 16 bar phrase. So you're giving a nice little extra taste there. Obviously I'm throwing a little bit of dynamics in there um, and that's something else you must think about. It's not a case of just playing an, uh, a, a beat or a note. We must be dynamic with it. That's what gives us the musicality on a drum kit. It's the dynamics that makes it musical. Otherwise, if I play it without an accent, this is what happens. very robotic, very sort of clinical in its approach, so therefore you're not helping to what's already established, which is kind of a swingy type feel with the 12 eighth notes. We need it to groove a bit, so we need the left hand that's usually, I know, is pretty weak and right-handed for left-handed drummers. I know it's pretty weak. What we've got to try and do is work on our left hand so that at least it starts to get a little bit stronger with its own accents being brought in. So, i.e., I'll just play it very uh, a bit slower now so you can actually hear how I'm bringing the left hand up and you can hear uh, um, which part of the beats I'm putting the left hand accent. Okay, so I may have just put an extra different kind of accent to the, the faster one there, just to show you, because what I'm doing is I'm playing for field purposes. What I'm trying to do is to play as spontaneous as I possibly can, which is your aim, obviously, as a drummer, to try and play as spontaneous as you possibly can. So you can see how my left hand's coming up and playing the same sort of figure. But within those subdivisions between the snare drum doing the backbeat, I'm incorporating some kind of accent formation just to give it that flavor and make it a little bit more musical. 
So once again, let me just play it again, um, and I'll try and put a few different kind of accents in there just to give you a little bit of a, a different feel of how it would sound when you uh, try this at home. Here we go. And so forth. See, I'm starting to just move around within the pole, still always having trying to remember that the measure of time is the most important thing. Everyone's playing to the measure of time, which is a quarter note feel. But once you start getting more um, relaxed and more accomplished and more confident in your own playing, you can start experimenting with these different kinds of uh, triplety and accented things and getting this left arm a bit more freer to move between hi hat and snare drum. Um, and it adds a nice little. Um, bit of flavour to the to the groove, I feel, anyway. I certainly would have played it on the track. Um, and I've played similar things on recordings where I've used that kind of um, uh, technique and it's gone down very well with the band and the producers, I hasten to add, uh, just simply because um, they didn't say anything different. Anyway, let's move on from there for the moment.